Hey, it's SpiderWebCom. It's Dave uh, here to talk about pivoting techniques. I'm not trying to say I'm a wizard or a guru at pivoting or anything. Believe me, I'm not. I don't even know how this stuff works or why it works. I'm not a mathematical wizard, <clears throat> but it does work. It does pocket balls. Uh, I found ways of pivoting that you definitely want to avoid, and I know ways of pivoting that'll pocket the ball, and that's really all that matters. Um, as far as I'm concerned, pool is outcome based. Either you make the ball or you don't. The hows are wise, so how the object ball gets there, I don't give a shit. I know some people are really concerned, and that's great. It's good for the sport to really dig into it. I don't care. All I know is if I do X, Y, and Z and the ball goes, that's all I know. Anyway, there's three different types of pivots I'm going to talk about. Uh, the first one's a rotational pivot. What I mean by a rotational pivot is a big arc to cue ball center. Uh, if you picture a pin that, or a nail that's driven through the shaft of the cue, and wherever you're bridging from, the cue is actually rotating from that point. It gives you a very long, wide arc to the center of the cue ball. We want to avoid those. I'll explain why in a second. The second one is uh, more of a traditional pivot. I call it a secondary pivot. It's uh, to the naked eye, to somebody standing to the side, it looks the same as the first pivot, that rotational pivot, except that it's a short shift to cue ball center. It's a very small arc. Uh, basically, what it means is your pivot point is farther back in your cue. When I'm over the object ball, I actually picture the, the pivot point as being somewhere near my joint. That's where I really focus in order to get a short shift to the uh, cue ball center. Finally, there's a hip pivot, which is Ron Vitello's pivot. Uh, works very, very well. The benefit of the hip pivot is it keeps the eye and the cue in the same line no matter where you go. And you're always shooting along your sight line. You're not moving your back hand and shooting across your sight line. Uh, I'm not saying that the second pivot, uh, more that shift pivot, it's bad. I'm not. Uh, I'm just saying that uh, it's, I'm really saying that Ron's has an advantage and it really comes down to preference. Some people aren't comfortable moving their upper torso after they set on a shot and I totally understand. Um, it's all up to you. I don't care what you do, just don't do that first. Don't have a long arc to the cue ball center. I guarantee you're going to be aimed stupidly if you do. Let's get started. I promise not to be long. Okay, if this was your shot, if I'm to pinch the cue at about 10 inches here, aim center to the left edge from my starting position, I'm on it. Now if I was to turn the back of the cue until I hit center, there's center ball. I'm now aimed almost exactly at the right edge of the object ball. I'm not even going in the direction of the pocket. I'm nowhere near it. Nowhere near it. Can't make the ball from there. Also, if I come in from the other direction, I'm still pivoting from the 10 inches on a rotational pivot, center to edge. I'm on it. Watch where the tip goes. I'm pivoting from where I'm pinching it. There's center ball right there. Watch where I go. Middle of no man's land. Can't make the shot. It's impossible. Uh, what I like to do is bridge from between 10 inches and 12 inches for your bridge length. Always stay within that range. It's the sweet spot for pivoting, without a doubt, in my opinion. It covers, I think it's good bridge length for short shots and long shots. It, it's pretty much all encompassing. I'm going to go center, center to the left edge from about 11 inches away. I'm going to pivot to center. And when you do so, you feel like you can't miss the ball. Now what I did there is I tightened my bridge and I torqued through my bridge. It feels like I'm tightening a bolt with a wrench. It's a tight push to the cue ball center and then from there I fire. And uh, yeah, I actually feel as though, I, I really need a top-down camera. I feel as though I'm turning from the center of the cue near the joint. That's what it feels like. Maybe that's the case. It may not be the case. What, it, what is the case is it's a different cue ball center. I'm not swinging way over there to hit the cue ball center. What I'm doing is I'm shifting slightly to the cue ball center. 
Meaning if I'm there, what I'm actually doing is that. It's a very small movement, small shift, not a big turn. Either could be achieved, either could be achieved from the same bridge position. That's what's strange. Um, the reason for that is because your hand is not an infinitely small point around which a line pivots around. It, it isn't. It's squishy, it's soft, could be hard if you're a concrete worker, but you can open it, you can close it, you can tighten it, you can loose it, it's dynamic. It changes to whatever you want it to be. So I can have the same point. Now from this point, I can rotate a big arc to cue ball center. And for that same bridge position, I can get a little shift to center. So from here, I can either pinch from pinching right here, either get a big swing or from the same length shift. Now the, sh the hip, talking about shifting, the hip pivot, Rombatello's system, I'm actually going to use the hip pivot <laughs> with centered edge, but you get the idea. I'm aiming centered edge about 11 inches from the cue ball. That's it. It's a very small movement. I am right on this ball. Can't miss it. Um, I wish I had a better camera to do close-ups doing this by myself in my basement. Just the theme of the session here, the theme. Short shift to center, not a big arc to center from about 10 to 12 inches away. If you do that, you have to you have to be doing it correctly. If you have a big, long arc, bad. Short shift, good. You make a lot of balls. Thanks.